Hi, this is Jeremy. Here to talk about cellular respiration. I'm going to assume you've seen the overview video. This one talks about a little more detail about what happens in the cell to convert energy from glucose, which we'll use as a model. The six carbon sugar and then the yellow beads representing electrons that it carries and shuttling that energy into ATP. Let me bring back our diagram, starting with the chemical formula. Uh, I won't emphasize this too much, but we're starting with some sort of carbon-containing molecule, in this case glucose. We need oxygen for aerobic respiration. And we're going to break these down into these products, water and carbon dioxide, all the while extracting energy, which will symbolize as electrons, coming out and making ATP. That's the main point. So we have these major stages, They're not steps, they're stages. Glycolysis alone is 10 different chemical steps, which I'll show not in great detail, but at least a rough overview. That's where glucose comes in. This happens in the cytoplasm. All these in red occur in the mitochondria. So let me go back to the cell and talk about glycolysis, step one. So here we are doing glycolysis. Glycolysis is going to take this particular glucose and ATP gets used to add a phosphate. Now this is ADP. And this one will get used to add a phosphate. Which seems kind of backwards. I thought we were supposed to be making ATP. Well, we'll get some of that energy back. Through other chemical steps, this is split in half, carrying these electrons with it. And from here on out, I'm going to look at these essentially separately. So I'm going to put this one aside and we'll see, assume the same thing happens to him as happens to this three carbon molecule carrying these electrons. All right, in one of these steps, I'm going to take an electron off. That's going to give me some energy in that electron transfer to add another phosphate. It's also going to give me an electron that I can give to this guy, my little taxi. This is NAD+. Plus. When I add an electron and some hydrogen, here I'll bring in my key. Hydrogen ions, I'm going to use these white beads to symbolize. Carbon atoms are black and oxygen atoms are red. And so molecular oxygen is O2. We have water with oxygen and two hydrogens. Carbon dioxide, which I'll probably really just not worry about the oxygens to make it easier. We've got these hydrogen ions. So NAD plus with an electron and a hydrogen becomes NADH and it's going to drive off and actually drop these off in the mitochondria here which we'll talk about later. So we'll come back to him. Exit stage left. Okay, so we have this guy. We've given off a little bit of energy. We have these now the rest of the chemical steps are going to leave that carbon-containing molecule intact, but is going to be used to give the energy back to these ADPs. And we've got to account for the other one that already exited. So we end up getting four ATPs out of this process. And we still have some electrons and a carbon-containing molecule. So let's sum up what we have for glycolysis so far. Let's come back to this chart. Glycolysis, we put in glucose. We got out a total of four ATP. Although to do that, we had to put in two ATP. So a lot of times that's referred to as two net ATP. We also got out some NADH, a couple of those that we'll use later to do some work for us as well. All right, so let's take this into the mitochondria where we'll get some more ATP out of this system. So now I need to bring in my mitochondria model. 
can move some of these guys out of the way. In the mitochondria, we have this outer membrane and an inner membrane. When this pyruvate molecule, that three carbon molecule comes in, it's going to go through an enzyme complex that is going to convert it. We call this step the acetyl-CoA conversion. Sometimes that's wrapped up in the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle. And what that's going to do is going to cleave off one of those carbons. It's going to give more of that another electron to my shuttle, who's going to drive off and let's just park him over on the side for now. Um, he'll keep coming back and forth. He's my taxi carrying electrons around. This now is carbon dioxide, so that can leave the cell through simple diffusion. I now have this acetyl group, and that's the acetyl part of this. It's going to attach to coenzyme A, as you can see a couple slots here, for attaching these two carbons to. It's still carrying all of its energy, and so now we've accomplished one more breakdown step. And what have we gotten out of that? Well, let's go back to our model here. So out of glycolysis came pyruvate, which goes into acetyl-CoA. We've given off, since we're accounting for this, starting with glucose, and we have two pyruvates out of this, I get two carbon dioxides. I just showed you the one of them. We also get out two NADH. Now, I still have that acetyl attached to my coenzyme A, which I'm going to give to the Krebs cycle. In the Krebs cycle, we have this molecule called oxaloacetate that already sits here in the matrix of the mitochondria. And coenzyme A is going to bring in these two carbons, which seem to have fallen apart a little bit there. And it's going to attach them along with these electrons that it's carrying to oxaloacetate. And this will be why it's a cycle, because we'll begin with that four carbon molecule and we're going to end up with the same thing in the end. Along the way, some of these carbons get lost as carbon dioxide. The electrons go with them and are given to our good buddy NAD plus to become NADH who's going to cart them off bit by bit. We're going to do that again. Another carbon dioxide leaves another electron being carted off and so on and so forth until this gets rearranged we have a phosphate involved at one point that gets donated directly to some ADP in the cell creating an ATP alright so we got a little ATP out of that one um, we're going to donate another electron to NAD+, we'll carry it off, and we're going to donate another one to a different molecule called FAD, it becomes FADH2, which will play the same role as our NAD+, electron taxi. Alright, so that's the Krebs cycle. We have our carbon chewed up. We're back to this four carbon molecule of oxaloacetate, so we've completed the cycle. We ended up with what we started with. Got a little NAD or ATP, got some carbon dioxide, and lots of electrons. So let's take our accounting. Where are we at here on these different stages? Well, we put acetyl CoA in. We got for both of those acetyl-CoA's, because there are two of them, we've got four carbon dioxides out. We also kicked out a couple of ATP. This is good. This is what we're after. So far, 
We're up to two ATP here, two net over here. All right, we're doing pretty good. We got four of them. We also have quite a few of those electron taxis. I'm starting to run out of room here. We got six NADH and two FADH2s carrying electrons. It should be obvious at this point that our next stage, the electron transport system, is going to collect all these electrons. So all these electrons are going to come in even from over here, from over here, and be given to the electron transport system, which is also where oxygen and water are largely involved. There's some water involved in the Krebs cycle as well, but it's a detail we'll ignore for now. All right, so let's go back to the electron transport system. This is a bit of a tricky one, but it's our main payoff. It's where we're going to get roughly 32 ATP. So obviously it's very important. It's also why oxygen is important. How does that one work? It's a convoluted system. It's not exactly what you'd expect. But it involves NAD, also the FADH2, but I'm really going to concentrate on this guy. He's carrying a bunch of electrons and has been shuttling them back and forth the whole time. Well, where has he been taking them? He takes them to this electron transport system, which is a series of proteins that are embedded in this inner folded membrane, along with our friend's ATP synthase. They're the, going to be the ones that make the ATP. And so in here, we have sitting lots of ADPs. We have quite a few phosphates sprinkled around that can be used to charge this one up into ATP. And we also have quite a bit of molecular oxygen. This is where the molecular oxygen comes in floating around inside here. We also have lots of hydrogen ions, which I'll sprinkle around. Hydrogen, we have phosphates, we have ADP, we have molecular oxygen, and let's bring this guy in. He's going to drop off electrons into the electron transport system, that series of proteins. He's going to drive off and he's get, get another one. He's going to bring that He's been doing this the whole time in glycolysis and these other steps, but now at the electron transport system step, these electrons are going to do some work for us. And what they're going to do is these electrons flow along this series of proteins is they're going to be used to power these little gears, these proteins, to pump hydrogen ions from that matrix into this inner membrane space. And so the same thing over here. As that electron flows along, it pumps hydrogen ions across, creating a gradient. So if I can cheat a little bit, just move these guys over here. I now have a clear gradient where I have lots of hydrogen here and not very much here, meaning that hydrogen wants to flow back into the matrix, and that can be used to power some work. And the work it's going to power is to, the only way it can get through, since this is a barrier, being a phospholipid bilayer. It's going to go through ATP synthase. And while it does that, it turns a little motor in here, which is used to add a phosphate group onto our ADP. It's going to do that over and over and over again, cranking out lots of ATP. I just don't have that many hands. The problem we have now, though, is this electron. This electron needs somewhere to go. And where it's going to go is it's going to be given to this molecular oxygen. These guys can split apart, making a little space. They can take that electron, actually a couple of them, we're going to leave it at that, combine with hydrogen. And what do we have now? Let's move that electron out of the way. We have an oxygen and two hydrogens. That's water. Water is nice and safe. So now water can float off, stay in the mitochondria, it can leave, can leave the cell entirely if it wants to. And we can keep letting hydrogens through, making more ATP, and 
using this oxygen to catch electrons and form water, neutralizing any danger. So that's where the oxygen and water are involved. Oxygen is the what is often referred to as the terminal electron acceptor. So it's where the electrons finally rest. So back to our diagram, which is getting rather full. We started in the cytoplasm with glycolysis, got a little ATP. We moved on to acetyl-CoA and Krebs cycle, where we finally chopped up all those six carbons from glucose. We had six carbons here, two left here, another four left here, and so I was out of an organic molecule. All I was left with electrons, which came into this system. Oxygen accepted those electrons, was converted to water, and that hydrogen ion gradient was used to make lots and lots of ATP. Hopefully that clarifies it. It's a complicated system. It's rather convoluted, but it's how we power everything we do inside of our cells.